The Leader of the Opposition. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, my question is to the Prime Minister. <clears throat> Today the Liberal government has <laughs> legislation before the parliament which implements its inadequate multinational taxation policy. However, the government's own budget papers for this policy show an asterisk where the dollar figures should be. Prime Minister, exactly how much revenue will this policy raise? The Treasurer. The Treasurer has the call. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I, I thank the Prime Minister for the opportunity. And I, I refer to the comments of the Commissioner of Taxation, who said hundreds of millions, Mr Speaker, hundreds of millions. And the reason he is able to say that is he knows that since the introduction of the multinational tax avoidance legislation, actual legislation in the parliament, Mr. Speaker, which will enable the Australian Tax Office to sit down and work through with multinational companies the tax they need to be paying, that has gone from 30 companies before we started as the member for North Sydney. He introduced this legislation to the parliament. Because of that legislation, it's now 80. It's now 80. And it deals with the country by country reporting also, Mr. Speaker, which was part of the OECD BEPS review, which the, this <coughs> government, which this country was at the forefront, at the leading edge, ahead of the curve, <coughs> when it came to ensuring that multinationals paid their fair share of tax. Now, those opposite like to boast about revenue that can be raised from taxes, Mr. Speaker. Those opposite, the architects of the mining tax that raise no revenue, Mr. Speaker. But yet they want to come in here and lecture those on this side of the House who have actual legislation that has been introduced that will ensure hundreds and millions of dollars will be raised in additional revenue by getting it right, Mr. Speaker. Those opposite. Made, made an absolute track record of failure Member to launch. Jagger, Jagger. Failure to launch is what we saw from them on every Member occasion. For Jagger, Jagger, and what we knew is they'd have ejecting. the big press conference, and it always went downhill after that, Mr. Speaker. It always went on downhill. Flashback clunkers, and the list goes on and on. School halls, the rest of it, Mr. Speaker. The worst thing that a Labor government can do is usually do something. If they just did nothing, they'd, they'd minimise the damage, Mr. Speaker. They would minimise the damage. Our package of reforms to ensure that multinational tax avoidance is dealt with is in the House of Representatives, Mr Speaker, and it's on its way to its sent. Hundreds of millions, hundreds of millions, because we know, Mr Speaker, you've got to work through the details and the tax office knows that they will be able to get that resource. Now, if those officers are so confident about their number, I ask them to simply release the assumptions behind their number. They're so interested in transparency. Release your assumptions, and you can explain why your proposal, your proposal, Mr. Speaker, from those opposite, will actually damage jobs and damage investment in this country. The group ratio rule method that they want to use, Mr. Speaker, does not have the bespoke approach that the government's approach has that enables us to look at individual investments, individual investments, legitimate business activities. What those opposite will do will increase the cost of developing infrastructure in this country, particularly for overseas pension funds. It will cost jobs and it will cost important projects.